Okay, it's time for Python on Hardware mm -hmm. this week. Yeah. We have a bunch of things going on. Projects and more, some year-end stuff, and uh, some really cool projects. Slide into the end of the year. So this is Alice the Robot, learns to grip with CircuitPython. Okay. Um, we're starting to see some robotics projects. This is uh, Connect Controlled. Oh, cool. Robot, and uh, it uses CircuitPython, and you, uh, if, if you watch the uh, tweet video and, yeah. and go to GitHub, you can see it's learning how to, to grip. It's kind of cool. You okay. can do all this with CircuitPython. Um, the December 2020 release of the Python extension via VS Code is out. A lot of people use VS Code, so if you like Python, you use VS Code. Check it out. There's a couple updates. You can read about that on the Microsoft blog. Mm. Um, this is interesting news for me. So uh, you we, love this. We had put in requests over the years to GitHub to support um, video files. Yeah. And uh, they did. And the reason for this is good is because. A lot of people put animated GIFs in issues. Which are bigger than movies. Especially for like hardware stuff. They're like, oh, like show me the wiring or show this thing Show what you're action. seeing on the screen, yeah. Yeah, or screen screencasts and stuff like that. Yeah. So the maximum is 10 megabytes. And right now it can just be as uh, an asset in an issue. I'm going to play around to see if you can add it to other places. But so far, so good. Uh, they also did a really neat update to their Markdown editor. Check that out as well. Um, the uh, deep dives at Scott are finished for this year. Um, they'll be starting up again in 2020, but you can check out the latest one on our YouTube. Um, if you did not happen to um, get a gift for someone, um, or maybe uh, you're like, oh no, I forgot someone, get them a gift certificate of Adafruit, and they can buy all the Python on hardware they want. Next up, there is this uh, interesting uh, study, and yeah. this was from MIT News, your old stomping grounds. Ah. Um, they did brain scans scan to people, and they looked at what parts of your brain are, are getting lit up when you look at block programming. Yeah. And then what part is lit up when you're doing Python. Hmm. And I think people always get stuck in this, like, either or, which one's better? And I feel like for block programming, um, it's not it's not... Or it's just like, and this is how a lot of people get started. It's yeah. another way to do something. It's like you can play chords on a guitar, but eventually you might need to play notes. And I think that's one of the things that like, you can start to piece together a program and it's like, oh, I wanted to do these things and here's all my choices. It's like a big multiple choice test. And then programming um, uses different parts of the brain where maybe yeah. it's like more like reading math or l l real uh, na natural language. Yeah. So anyways, check it out. I think there'll be a lot of insights as um, we start to study the impacts of uh, programming on people. Yeah. I mean, there's no right, there's, you know, there's no, it's not like S Scratch Junior or Python are better for learning programming. What I like is that some people learn better with one or the other yeah. or they prefer one or the other. And I'm glad that there's two options. And here's a pro tip. Don't listen to anyone ever on Twitter or Hacker News or anything about what the best programming language is or what's best or just like some curmudgeon person. Um, play around with these things. You know what's cool? Lots of different choices. Yeah. You know what's neat? Um, bouncing between different programming languages uh, when you want to get something done and be like, oh, that's a new way to think about solving a problem. Um, so look at it as like good, not like, oh, no, or only um, and, and gatekeeping. Yeah. Okay. Uh, news from around the web. Uh, this is kind of neat. We have Boot Manager um, for the MagTag. So mm -hmm. basically, remember the old days back in Linux, you can use like Lilo, Lilo, yeah. and you choose your little. Yeah. You could do stuff like that. Okay. Important <laughs> yeah. Linux to e ink. Yeah, we're going to do that. Um, this is kind of cool. Um, you pull a switch and it gets you out of a Zoom call. I thought that was funny because they were like, it was like, it, well, the video was great. And uh, the author was like, you know, they wanted to get out of you know, videos, but they didn't want that awkward, like, reaching for the click button, yeah. so they just have this little, like, thing that they pull, and when they pull it, it sends the... And another circuit Python project, one of the things I have noticed, speaking of programming languages, yeah. is there's a lot of people who know Python, and they've been working from home, and they're starting to think about physical devices and projects that they want or need, like a thing that you pull, and it ends the Zoom call, but they don't want to, like, learn C, or, like, download a crazy IDE, or do all yeah. this stuff. They already know Python, so they're instantly able to do this. So I thought that was kind of neat. We're seeing lots and lots of projects. This is with, a, with a Adafruit Feather NRF 52840 and CircuitPython. Um, this is kind of neat. Um, Marco's on the show and tell. These are these uh, neat dripping icicles that yeah. did with Python. And what's cool is um, on uh, sure, lots of different platforms, yeah. uh, Python can do advanced fast animations. 
Yes. So especially like with all the hardware that we have now that supports uh, Python, um, kind of cool. Um, next up, uh, parcel uh, Arduino on a MagTag. Check that out. Um, this is from MakerBlock. From MakerBlock, um, this is you know again going with theme. Um, MakerBlock programmed a Qtpy Pi using a circuit Python for the first time in a few days. First time ever using Python. And MakerBlock said, hey, you know, maybe I don't want to go back to Arduino because it is a, it is different. And this is one of those things like try it out. If you if you've only done like Arduino stuff, try out Python on on hardware. And also, my request is if you're doing Python on her once hardware once in a while, try to do the exact same thing in Arduino and see the differences. Yeah. And see how much harder it easier is. Good example, IoT stuff, nearly impossible to do with Arduino, like getting strings right. and like displaying stuff, put on ink, uh, custom fonts, bitmaps. Good luck. Circuit Python, um, we make it quote too easy. Yeah. So, anyways, high praise. Thank you. Maker block. Um, this is kind of cool. Control your TV using the Force. Build a gesture controlled ro- uh, remote using uh, Adafruit Feather M4 Express and Circuit Python. Um, this is a cool like uh, little uh, prop. Bo- yeah, it's like a prop, and uh, they're adding Circuit Python to it. It's kind of cool. Uh, more about the Open Book project. You can see some PCBs that are going to work with the Adafruit Clue and an ADC board. Uh, here is a Seed Duino Shell, which also supports. Circuit Python. You can see some of the boards on there. Yeah. Analog panel meters using Circuit Python. New Feather S2 by an expected maker. Here is a new Ooh. Feather board with Bluetooth from Recrainer Labs. Oh, this is the new STM Bluetooth chip. Ah. That's cool. It's somebody like here's the thing. They were like, people asked, "Are you going to make this?" And I said, "I don't think I'm going to get around to it." But I'm glad somebody else yeah. did. Yeah. And in the popular Feather format. Mm. Um, this is kind of cool. This is a full-on Circuit Python book from a lector in France. And Yay. Probably this With is my intro. yeah probably my guess um, is from uh, Michael Button and uh, and it's in French. Um, my guess is you're probably going to see a lot of Python on hardware, specifically in France because Python is a national programming language for yeah. students there. And one of the things that we're trying to do is talk to policymakers um, in the U.S., especially as there's a next chapter in our administration, and say hey like. If we're gonna if we're gonna choose something to you know suggest to kids, what has machine learning? What has data science? What has things like Jupyter notebooks? What has things that is open source? What has things that is a really good community? What has things that like you can kind of read it and understand what's going on? Mm-hmm. So we think Python. So I think this will be interesting to see if this uh, continues uh, around the globe. Um, next up, a couple other sick of Python projects. Here is um, a fun. Uh, NeoPixel signage about um, you know keeping distance about mm-hmm. around the mistletoe. Um, here's a guide using the Pimeroni and Viro and Featherwing using the NRF fifty two eight forty. Bite size Python book is out. Um, Python turtle for beginners. I uh, love turtle. Yeah, um, and a couple other things um, that's ahead. Uh, look for the PyCon event that's going to be in um, March. Mm-hmm. And if you want to donate to the Python Foundation, that's one of their big yes. things. And then um, other stuff with events, let me just get down to it here, is uh, you can check out all the things our team's up to and more, and the libraries, um, is uh, Py Cascades, Open Hardware Summit in April, and then you're doing a Linux event at the oh, end boy. of January. That's like a month from now. Yeah, at the end of January. Let me get my slides. Yeah, for um, what's on uh, Linux-based hardware, which is Blinka, which is libraries. And, it, and it's uh, yeah. a way to, to use the CircuitPython libraries we made across multiple platforms. Yeah. So, okay. And with that is our Python on Hardware news this week. Yay. Blinka, blinka.